Much is happening in the world around us. The stage is being set for the appearing of the Antichrist and the Great Tribulation period. And one of the things that will help usher the world into the Great Tribulation, and we will see what is called the Global Reset. What does that mean? And when will this happen? That's coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. Thanks for joining us all this week for Arkansas Live. We've been talking about the victory that overcomes. And that comes out of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, our faith. And I'm impressed with the Holy Spirit to minister to you along these lines to encourage you and to teach you about the victory that overcomes. Because in the midst of all the chaos, trials, and tribulations, you can't quit, you can't give up, you can't get weary. And the only way you can overcome, first it begins with being born again. That's the entrance into the victory that overcomes is the new birth. And then you have to know what the Word says, not what everybody else thinks or what the world says, or even in Christian circles. You will hear terms and you will hear definitions, but you have to know what the Bible says yourself. The Holy Spirit will teach you just like He's taught others. And the Holy Spirit is not twins. There's only one Holy Spirit. And Jesus said He was the comforter, the teacher, the paraclete, the one alongside with. And Jesus said that this Holy Spirit, the anointing, would teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever He has said. So we're in the victory that overcometh the world. Our faith, our faith grows. Um, you hear the word, faith grows and faith increases. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the more words you hear, the more your faith grows, and the more your faith grows, the more victory you will see and have in the midst of tribulation. Now, clear up some things. We are not in the Great Tribulation now. We are not in the middle of World War III now. We've already talked about that and taught on that. Uh, this is not the great tribulation period. The vials and the seals and the horsemen and all the wraths and stuff that happens in Revelation 16 is not being poured out now. Jesus said we are still in the end of the age, the church age, the age of grace. We are still in this dispensation. And that will only change after the church departs the earth, after the church is caught up raptured, if you please, and taken to heaven. Jesus appears in the clouds. He does not touch down. Nobody sees him. It's, it's, it's expedient that you know the difference between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ. They are not the same. The second coming of Christ, when he comes in all of his glory with his saints and every eye sees him, that's at the end of the tribulation period. That's the second coming of Christ. That's at the end of the tribulation period. The rapture takes place at the beginning of the tribulation period, the great tribulation. Go back to Matthew 24. Let's read it again. Jesus told his disciples, and since you're a disciple, you can qualify for hearing this. Matthew 24, of course, he's talking to his disciples. He's talking to Jews in Israel. They never had heard of a rapture because it had never been discussed. It wasn't until the Apostle Paul uh, that the rapture began to be taught, the revelation of the rapture. But they did hear what was called the second coming of Christ. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, and I'll cut to the verses Verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom should be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. The end of that age will come after the gospel is preached to the world. Then you go down to verse 21. Then shall be great tribulation. Now here's a distinguishing 
mark between just plain old tribulation and the great tribulation. The great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. So this is different than just tribulation, period, hard times, period. This is the great tribulation, period. And then he goes on and tells the, his disciples what's going to happen. And in verse 29, he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light, etc. There will be signs in the heavens. But this is after the great tribulation, period. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man uh, in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The rapture, nobody sees Christ. We rise to meet him. He catches us up in the air. Second coming is when he comes back to set up his millennial kingdom, and that's at the end of the tribulation, and everybody sees him because he comes as king of kings and lord of lords. Now, what we're going to talk about today is, is the great tribulation period, and this is where I want to uh, apply and understand and define this term that we keep hearing. I've read it in books. I've heard ministers preach on it, and they talk about a global reset. Now, you'll hear people talk about a reset. Most of what they are referring to, I can't judge their hearts, but I can, I can discern by what they say. Most of what they are talking about is the trouble in the time that we're in right now. They usually say, and, and I've read it in books, they usually say because of COVID-19, uh, because of pandemic, because of earthquakes, and because of our financial, because of our moral dec decay, all these things that we are in a global reset now. 25 million people out of work. Well, we did that to ourselves. The government started printing money and sending money to people, paying them not to work. We did that to ourselves. That wasn't God. All the confusion, the chaos, the um, gobbledygook that goes on today about the virus and not about the virus, about the vaccine, not about the vaccine, truth, no truth, consequences, whatever. All of that stuff is all man-made. That is not God. God is not the author of confusion. So most people talk about a global reset. And we're still talking about the victory that overcomes. Your, your victory is your faith. And you need to know the truth. You need to know the terms. So the global reset that you keep hearing about <clears throat> most of the time is referenced by what's going on right now. We're going to have to reset the economy. We're going to have to reset the labor force. We're going to have to reset the economy. We're going to have to reset the banking. All of these things. Now, as you heard me teach the last session on World War III, we are not in World War III now. And all the things that are going on right now is not the global reset. The global reset has nothing to do with all the chaotic activities that are going on in the earth today. Granted, we're going to have to make changes. We're going to have to confront uh, the unemployment, uh, the economy, all the half-truths, the lies, the politics. We're going to have to confront all of that. But, but most of that we brought on ourselves. The global reset does not even begin until after the church departs the earth and the great tribulation period begins. And the great tribulation period cannot begin until the church departs. So the global reset, and you hear this term, uh, really has to do with the great tribulation period. That's the global reset, is when the church departs this earth. We'll read it in a minute, Second Thessalonians. The global reset begins after the departure of the church and is included in a part 
of the great tribulation period. Now, I just read your scriptures out of Matthew 24. Let's go back over there and read again um, what Jesus uh, told his disciples. And I think I read them all to you earlier, but let's, let's make sure. Okay, Matthew 24, let's go. 14, I read you that one. 21, I read you that one. 29, I read you that one. So I read all the scriptures that Jesus told his disciples that would confirm what we are calling the global reset, but it's the great tribulation period, before, during, and after. Now, let's go over to 2 Thessalonians, and let's take a look at what the Apostle Paul uh, said uh, to the Thessalonians, and he made it very clear. He said, Brethren, I beseech you by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him, that's the rapture, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, if you've gotten a letter telling you <laughs> it wasn't from me, if you've, gotten, if you've gotten a letter that had my name signed to it, not to be shaken or troubled or whatever, that the day of Christ is at hand, I didn't write it. I didn't send it. Let no man deceive you by any means. I, I think we have not emphasized enough what Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 24, uh, 3 or 4, verse 3 or 4, when he said, take heed that no man deceive you. And sometimes I get, I condemn myself because I question everything that I hear. I'm not, I'm not trying to be contentious. I, I, I know the difference, but Jesus said, see to it. See to it. Take heed. Pay attention to this. Take heed that you are not deceived. So deception is, is the uh, watchword uh, of the day, of the time that we're in right now. See to it. Take heed that you are not deceived. I, I, I know the difference between judging the message and judging the messenger. I'm not judging the messenger, but I have every right to, to judge the message. And I have every right to be a fruit inspector, according to the Bible, not, not, the, not the person. But he says, don't be shaken in mind, troubled. Uh, don't let any man deceive you by any means. Here he goes. For that day, the day of the Lord, the second coming of Christ, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And a better translation or a prayer phrase says, that day shall not come until the departure of the church. The departure of the church takes place in Revelation 4. The Bible says the church is in the heavens with Christ. We have begun the marriage supper of the Lamb, the judgment seat of Christ to be rewarded for what we've done in the body. The world goes immediately after the church departs, after the departure of the church. Then here, here he goes on and he says, it, and the man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God, all that's worshiped, so that he, as God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. <laughs> that was Satan's downfall in the beginning. The war that was in heaven in Revelation. Uh, if you read uh, Ezekiel and Isaiah, you'll find out this was Satan's M.O. This is what got him kicked out of heaven. This is what caused him to fall because he was an archangel. And he wanted to be God. And so he got kicked out of heaven, rebellion personified. Notice it says here, who opposes and exalts himself against all that is called God, all that is worshiped, so that he is God, that he as God 
sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So the Antichrist, the man of sin, the false prophet, all of the characters of the Great Tribulation period all take their place center stage only after the departure of the church. Can't happen as long as the church is still here on earth and we are still here on earth. So, and I, I charge those that teach on these lines, please do the body of Christ a, a favor. And any time that you talk about these things, any time you talk about the rapture of the church, the return of Christ, the return of Christ, I've, I've, I've talked to ministers and said, look, when you say the return of Christ, define it. Because the majority of Christians don't know what you're talking about. Even those that do, they don't know whether you're talking about the second coming or the rapture. So you can't just say the return of Christ without defining whether it's the rapture of the church or the second coming. The rapture of the church precedes the great tribulation period. The second coming is after the great tribulation period. That's a very simple, easy way to remember. And the global reset doesn't take place until after the departure of the church and the beginning of the tribulation period. That is the global reset. What we're facing right now of getting ourselves back on our feet, confronting our errors, our immorality, uh, our greed, all of these things, we, we've sown the seed and we're reaping the harvest in this area. So we'll have to quit sowing the seed. You have to quit, you have to quit killing babies, first of all. First and foremost, we, we've got to quit <laughs> exterminating the unborn. Over 60 million babies killed, murdered in their mother's womb. How are you going to get God to bless you when you refuse to, to stop killing babies? So we've shot ourselves in the foot. We've done this to ourselves. And now the transgendered and now all the immorality and all the sexual perversion and all this kind of stuff. How are you going to, how are you going to change anything if you just keep committing the same sin over and over and over? Who was it? I understand somebody said that's insanity to believe for something different, but yet you keep doing the same thing. And I'm going to say this, and I might be criticized for it, and you might take offense to it. That's, I understand that. All of your praying, all of your prayer meetings, all your fasting, all of your everything is not going to produce anything until you repent and stop the insanity. As long as you stop killing the babies, stop the perversion, Stop the greed. If you'll, if you'll take care of all those things, then God will come in and he will fix the problems. But not until then. And you hear people talk about the tipping point. Oral Roberts taught this in the 80s. He probably taught it before then. I heard him teach it in the 80s. The tipping point. And he used Genesis, Solomon, Gomorrah as the scriptural example. And let me just say this uh, about some other things. A lot of uh, prophecy today follows a pattern. And, and one honest prophecy teacher said this, and I commend him for it. A lot of the stuff that we are using to stir people up, alarm people, write books, sell books, is... is uh, patterns, um, they, they are, they're, they're hooking on to patterns in the past or in the Old Testament or things that have happened in the past. Um, and and you, can, you can make a mistake by trying to do that because we, we can find a pattern for just about anything we want to believe or that we want to prove or support. You know, when uh, President Trump was elected uh, president and uh, the Christian community by and large, the prophecy teachers, oh, he's Cyrus. This is Cyrus taken out of the Old Testament. 
And everybody thought, oh, yeah, he's Cyrus. He's come to fix America. He, he did a lot of good things, a lot of wonderful things. But now that he's no longer in office, those same people that said he was Cyrus, a pattern in the Old Testament, are now calling him Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> That's another pattern. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, Saddam Hussein, the one that we executed <laughs> over in Iraq uh, several years ago, he thought he was Nebuchadnezzar. He thought he was going to be king. Well, he's dead now. He was hiding in a hole in the ground. Now they're saying that Trump is Nebuchadnezzar. And now they're giving you the pattern of that Old Testament story. So be careful about patterns because you can make a pattern to fit just about anything. Just, you, you don't have to have a pattern. Just stick to the word. Just stick to the scriptures and, and quit changing your patterns, so to speak. All it does is breed more confusion and it might, it might stir people up for a little while. It might sell you a few books and, and get you a few speaking engagements. But it's, it's all speculation, conjecture, it's hype. And that is not uh, what God intends for us to do or, or to use. The global reset, this is where we uh, are right now. The global reset is not what's going on now. Uh, all of the things that we've done to make shipwreck of our nation. The global reset is, is a total world order that goes into effect after the church is taken out. Let, let, we never did get to 2 Thessalonians. Go over to 2 Thessalonians and uh, read with me. In uh, chapter 2, verse 4, who, uh, talking about the man of sin, the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God, all that's worshiped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. He's talking about the Antichrist. Now, the spirit of Antichrist, it, it, the Bible says, was in the world when Christ was there. The spirit of Antichrist. In the New Testament, it talks about the spirit of Antichrist, but not the Antichrist himself, not the person of the Antichrist. So he said, and, and we know the church is the withholding uh, restraint. So he said, remember, he that withholdeth uh, the church company uh, are, are holding so that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity, that's the spirit of Antichrist, does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked one and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Uh, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So there we are. There's the global reset. After the church departs, then globalism or one world government will begin and not before. Now, tomorrow, we're going to talk about the final solution. What is the final solution? Join me for tomorrow's Arkansas Live, and you will be blessed. Right now, I want you to watch this spot and show you how to get my book, Seasons, Signs, and Spiritual Things. Watch this, and I'll be right back. The Father is waiting patiently for the precious fruit of the earth, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. So we're in a time period now that the body of Christ has never been in before. You know, there's a, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of false information out there. 
And so I wanted this book to be about the truth. The knowledge of the truth makes you free from worry, from anxiety, from fear. To order Seasons, Signs, and Spiritual Things by Pastor Happy Caldwell for $11.99 plus shipping and handling, call us at 1-888-641-3375 or log on to our website, www.vtntv.com. Build your biblical understanding and be ready for the coming of the Lord. I wanted this book to help you stay out of the ditch on one side of the road or another. I want you to stay in the middle of the road. This, this book will bring stability and clarity. It'll show you how God leads, guides, and directs us. It does not contain what I've taught you this week, but it does uh, contain information about how to stay in the middle of the road, not to get off. Seasons, signs, spiritual things. And there's a couple of chapters in there. Signs for unbelievers, signs for believers. Believers are not to be led by signs. Believers are to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance everything Jesus said. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Those that are the sons of God are to be led by the Spirit of God. Paul said to the Corinthian church one time, he said, I cannot talk to you about spiritual things because you are carnal. You're dull of hearing. And that's what Satan has done religiously to brainwash the church and to get them into carnality. Uh, like the leader of the uh, um, seeker-friendly group several years ago, he said, we failed at making disciples. All we created was carnal Christians. So that's what this book is about. And I encourage you to get a, a copy. Now, tomorrow on Tomorrow's Arkansas Alive, uh, we're going to go from the global reset to the final solution. And I encourage you to come and uh, hear this. And of course, if you miss a, a lesson, you can go online, vtntv.com, and pull up on demand. So I'll join you tomorrow. Uh, remember, Jesus is Lord over Arkansas and wherever in the world you're watching, too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection, and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.